Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terrio and today I have a new video for you guys where we're going to go in depth of what to do when you find a winning lookalike audience and how to further expand on it to help prevent burnout of that lookalike audience. Before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for new videos every other day just like this video. Let's get started guys. Okay, so a lot of time after we find a winning lookalike audience, we'll start to scale it up. You know, we'll start increasing the budget and stuff on it. And then over time, we'll start to see the ROAS drop. Now, obviously we can introduce some new creatives and stuff, but also what happens is we run out of people in that lookalike audience to target. So usually a lookalike audience, 1% USA, we'll see like, you know, 2.1 million people, for example. And out of that 2.1 million people, we probably only have like 3% that we actually will purchase our product right away, right now. And it's what we need if we're going to do some purchase conversion campaigns. But what happens when ROAS drops? Again, you can introduce new creatives or what a lot of people do is they start testing more lookalike audiences. So they see that, hey, a purchase seven day lookalike audience works great. Let's start testing more lookalike audiences. So let's do initiate checkout. Let's do add to cart. Let's do website visitors. And then there are like five or six different lookalike audiences all in like their testing campaign, which is okay if it's in your testing campaign, but what you'll see is ROAS really doesn't improve at all on your, your first one or on any of them. And you'll actually start to see maybe a little bit of performance drop. And the reason why is due to a thing called audience overlap. Now you have to understand guys, when you're running a purchase seven day audience, you know, a lookalike audience, 1% USA, and you do a initiate checkout seven day audience, 1% USA, and then it adds a cart seven day audience, 1% USA. They're actually not that different. You know, you would think, okay, well, yeah, one's full of ads carts, one's full of initiate checkouts, and one's full of purchases. Obviously, it's gonna be pretty different, but in reality, it's not that different. And we just gone through this with another ad account where we, we started to scale up on one particular audience. So I was like, let me do both. Let's let's test a few variety of audiences. And then let's also test going vertical. So going vertical with a lookalike audience is instead of just keeping that purchase seven day 1%, you start to test one to 2%, three to 4%, five to 6%, and you're expanding the people inside of your lookalike audiences, you're reaching new people. So when you do it, the first way of just testing more lookalike audiences, you run into audience overlap. And I'll show you in a second, again, what audience overlap looks like. And what that does is it just means you're reaching the same people. It's just a different name for the lookalike audience. So purchase seven day, niche checkout seven day, both look like 1%. USA are likely probably to have like a audience overlap of like 60% and we'd like to keep that under 30%. So let's hop in the ads manager. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about because I know that might be a little hard to kind of grasp and stuff, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about with one ad account we're working on right now. So inside this ad account right here, you'll see that we have a purchase seven day audience right here. I'm looking at the last seven days of data lifetime. This audience right here has absolutely crushed it for us but what happened was over the last seven days we've seen results drop down and we needed to either a new creatives or b new audiences reach new people that haven't seen our ads before so that way the creative that we're using right now yes it fatigued on that audience but can we put that creative in a new audience that a new set of eyes that hasn't seen it before and will it respond well so that's exactly what we did and we tested a one to 2% purchase seven days and we've seen a 2.1 X ROAS. This brand has a break even around 1.6, 1.7. So we're, you know, pretty good in the clear right there. And again, this is top of funnel. So all we're trying to do is break even at the minimum. So that's what we did. And we've seen a good increase in results and stuff. And it's exactly what we wanted. We wanted just a new set of eyes and increase it. Now, what I also did just for fun, I am starting to test some new lookalike audiences just to see if any of them will perform better, just slightly, just better. But also too, you gotta keep in mind, I don't wanna start testing a bunch and fall in the loop of continuously testing look like audiences and continuously running 1%. I know I need to go vertical as we scale 
to reach new people. So if we go inside of the audiences right here and inside the audiences, you actually have a really cool tool where you can see this audience overlap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a purchased 180 days audience right here. And I'm gonna grab a, let's say 10% of website visitors last 180 days. So this is the top 10% of website visitors are on our website. And I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna go to show audience overlap. And you can see right here, we have a 56% audience overlap between these two right here, the selected audience and the comparison audience. And the problem is I said anything below 30, we're nearly double that 30%. So if I run ads and I spend money, you know, purchase 180 day audience right here, then the problem here is we're gonna reach 56% of those people of another ad set. So now you have two ad sets fighting with like a 50%, 56% overlap and due to the 2.1 million people inside that look like audience three percent of those people ready to buy i highly suggest that three percent of these 1.2 million people overlap are the three percent that are in both of those ad sets which will increase cpms because we're essentially bidding against ourselves two we're going to pay more per purchase. Three, we're diluting our money across multiple lookalike audiences that all share a similar audience overlap, which is gonna drop results. And you just keep on this train right here of testing and testing and testing, and just you'll never have that initial outbreak like you want it. So instead, what we do is we go vertical. We're gonna start expanding. We're gonna start going higher. We're gonna start going to one to 2% now. We're gonna start going to two to 3%, and we're gonna reach a fresh batch of new people that first time we're gonna see those creatives, and it's gonna give us the algorithm more people to go after. So going back inside the ads manager, I'll show you right here. That's exactly what I did. I started going vertical. I went one to two percent. I went two to three. I went all the way up to 10% because I know that A, we have a well optimized pixel. Two, we need to test more. And I didn't want to just go and just put all my eggs in one basket for one to two percent. So I went and tested all of them and I got a few winners. And that's exactly what I want. It's okay to have a few failures. I just needed one or two winning audiences. And that's kind of what we did right here. So if you look, we see. I tested all of the purchase seven days that worked really well. And we had a one to 2% that performed really well. And then we had a four to 5% perform really well. I know it's weird. I know it's not just straight up. Okay. One to 2% work should work really well since the 1% is burn up. So, you know, there's no reason to test all of them, but that's the problem. That's one of the keys and concepts of working really well with Facebook ads is to test everything to really improve results. So that's what we did. And Obviously, we have two winners. So now I want to continuously focus on these. And then again, I'm going to test these more, but I do want to have one or two look like audiences also to I'm testing on the side because yes, they might have a little bit of audience overlap, but in some cases we do see a little bit better performance. I just want to try to warn you guys, don't fall down this cycle of continuously testing 1% look like audiences and stuff because you, you just, just the simple tweak of testing a going a little bit higher, expanding out of just a 1% is we're going to start to see much different results. We've seen this with an ad account before where I just kept on running 1%, 1% and it got to the point where all the look like audiences didn't work. And because we ran it so long, we spent so much money on it. Everyone's just diluted and fatigued in there. We tested new creatives and nothing. We just need, we need a fresh new group of people, some fresh new data. So then we jumped up one to 2%, three to fours, et cetera, and seen a, a big rush in results because we start reaching new people that look just like our, you know, current people right now that we're going after. And it was just like, getting that initial rush to get new results. So I only recommend this to people who are spending, you know, a few hundred bucks a day that have been scaling for a period of time. If you just start running Facebook ads, you launch a lookalike audience, it performs well for three days and dies out. It's likely that you didn't burn out all those people. It's more along the lines of you probably just not doing something right with your targeting, your creative and your offer and stuff. So this is only gonna be applicable to certain people. I just had this exact conversation with another one of my consulting clients and they run into the same issue. They had five look like audiences that all had huge audience overlap. They had one particular one that was performing very well compared to all the other. And he wants to know how we scaled if we need to do more look like audiences. Like, no, you need to go vertical on the one that's working extremely well. So I recommend you guys try this out. Let me know in the comments below if this helps you out in any way. So closing out, if you're an e-com business owner, you're spending at least a thousand dollars a day on paid advertising and would like to book a consultation call with me, click the link below. 
I'll walk you through exactly what we've done to, to scale multiple of my clients' businesses over to 400K plus per month. I'll show you results, all that good stuff, um, and exactly what you need to do to take action on. So again, only if you're an e-com business owner doing at least $1,000 a month just due to you know, the way we charge and all that good stuff. So um, it, lower people, keep watching these videos, keep absorbing value because you're just a few steps away and congratulate you for jumping on this video because you know what's improved, you're improving it and uh, you're kicking ass. So I'll congratulate you a little hand on the back for uh, you know studying and learning more. So lastly, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every other day, just like this one. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Alrighty guys, it's about that time. My name is Nick Terrio. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.